It has been a busy week. It's nearly the end of the summer holidays. I love my kids, but oh my goodness, six weeks is a long time. I'm sure a few of you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, today we're gonna to look at control services and can they improve your photo editing workflow? We're going to look at this one, which is the Loop Deck Plus, and compare it against the palette gear and try and see which one is best. So let's go. things I really love about technology is just how they can solve problems that we've got. They make our lives easier, they make things quicker to do, and just generally improve our productivity across our life. Over the years though, my love of tech has kind of dwindled a little bit because our mobile phones are all the same, computers are great, and they've been great for a long time. Lenses have been great for a long time. And the market's flooded with cheap Chinese imports of pretty much everything these days, and it's just not particularly exciting. So it's actually quite nice then to have a product that you can actually get a little bit excited for and having sort of more hardware control of programs like Lightroom I think is a very interesting thing. So let's get into the computer, have a look at both of these in a bit more detail and see which one might be best for you. So what is a control surface? That probably needs to be answered. It's essentially just having physical hardware control over the software functions that you're using in your applications been used in the movie industry and the TV industry for a long time. Now we can have that in the home environment as well. So it's just about having physical control over things like exposure, over the timeline in, in Premiere Pro, and just being able to edit and do everything with these buttons rather than a keyboard and a mouse. So first up we have the palette gear and it's this modular system with these dials, buttons and sliders, and you can just break them off, move them around however you see fit which is really nice because you can just design it yourself basically to serve your own workflow. The way it works is by having this single module here which plugs into the computer via a micro USB cable. I don't like micro USB cables, they're weak and they can break easily. The connection, if you waggle it around too much, can become loose, but it still seems to work quite well. It then connects to the rest of the modules in whatever arrangement you want, and as long as you've got the pins connected to the pads, then it will work. The dials you can see here are really quite nice. They kind of turn really nicely. They press and turn as well, and I like that in Adobe Premiere Pro, because if we connect this one back up, you can just turn it like this, and it will scrub through the timeline, which is really nice frame, by frame and then if you press and turn it will move a lot faster. One slight frustration is that the acceleration isn't particularly great and if you want to scrub through the whole timeline it isn't particularly nice but still it is nice. It's a kind of a new way of editing. It isn't quite as intuitive as you might think. It takes a bit of practice like anything does but I think once you've got the gist of that it's going to speed it's going to really speed up my uh, video editing anyway. So you can set up the other buttons as well. So I can just go here to set my in point, just wind that along a bit, set my out point, hit the button here and just make that cut. I can then undo that with the other button there. That's just what I've got set up. And that is how I'm going through editing through my footage. These arcade style buttons as well are just beautiful. Just listen to this. Ah. Oh. It's just so nice. It's like going back in time to when I used to go to Red Car Seafront and go to the arcades and play Street Fighter. <laughs> Did you feel great? But that just might be me. I don't know. Let's go into Lightroom with the palette gear. And when you switch applications, like you can see there, it switches the application on the little LCD screen that we have here, which is really nice. You don't need to worry about switching it yourself although you can do that. So we're into Lightroom here, I have a picture. This is a HDR picture, so I've got loads of dynamic range in here. I can adjust the shadows with that one, the white highlights there, so I'm gonna bring those highlights down. I can increase the shadows as well with that one. And then I've got the exposure slider here and the contrast slider there. That is where we start running into 
the weakness of the pallet gear. So for this one, which is the expert kit, it comes in very, very expensive, over 300 pounds for this. And if, as you start to add these individual modules, it just becomes even more expensive. The dials are 50 pounds each. The buttons are about 30 pounds each. And then the sliders are 60 pounds each beyond the cost of that starter kit that you buy. It's just so expensive. And then you still don't have enough dials to use in Lightroom. Within the software, you can have different profiles. I'll just show you that. So if we open the Palette Gear software up, you can set these to, in these tabs here, to different profiles. I could, in theory, set up a double Lightroom develop module. So I then set up a button to click across to the next one and it moves it down in to controlling clarity and dehaze and vibrance. Really not a smooth workflow though, so I haven't even bothered setting that up. The other weakness as well is that when you select the adjustments here, so things like the brush, graduated filter like I have here, I'll drag one down, just keep that straight. If I then affect the exposure, it still is just affecting the main exposure. It isn't affecting the top exposure here, which is the gradient, that is not very nice. If you press down the dials, it resets them to their original standpoint, start point, which is good, but there's just no way of doing that with the sliders. So although the sliders seem quite intuitive for Lightroom because it has its sliders in the software, they actually don't work particularly well with the palette gear and with Lightroom because there's just no way of resetting them. and the slider sort of sticks to wherever it is physically on here and it just doesn't feel like a particularly good way of editing in Lightroom. So for me, I haven't found it very good for editing. Let's move over to the loop deck. So we talked about the loop deck a little bit on the video last week, but I just want to go into a little bit more detail about it now. Just for full disclosure, loop deck did send me this loop deck plus. I told them that I just wanted to make a video about it and compare it against the palette gear. They were still confident enough to send me it, so thanks to them. It's not a sponsored video though. They're not telling me what to say. So if I hate it, I'm gonna tell you that I hate it. But so far though, I haven't, thankfully. So let's edit this picture using the loop deck. Now, as you can see on the setup here, you have a huge amount of, con of the controls that are built into Lightroom. We have exposure, contrast, all the top sliders here are already built into the loop deck. You then have a cursor here, which can skip, just works like the cursor on your keyboard as well. We've got some more keyboard controls down the bottom here as well. Uh, you've got copy and paste, and then you've got custom buttons that you can customize to pretty much do anything you want. I've used this one here, the C5 one, just by the cursors here to switch between the library module and then the develop module that you can then hit the screen mode here to go full screen and see your picture full screen and it's just got lots of nice features in it so let's start editing this picture without further ado and we'll start with just increasing the exposure very slightly i'm going to add in some contrast in as you turn the dials it just instantly reacts in lightroom as well on that dial and it's just it's so fine control that you have it just feels really nice to do. Let's bring the highlights down, we'll put the shadows up and increase the whites. And then I want to bring in a gradient. So let's draw that gradient, hold the shift down on the loop deck because it has those few keyboard controls and then just drop that ND grad in with the loop deck. Very nice. It then automatically affects that, uh, that ND grad that we have selected. So I want to reduce the exposure on that grad down to, I'll do about two stops as if I was using a physical two stop grad. It's got contrast in there already, but I don't want that. I'm just gonna pop that contrast button down and it resets it a bit like the dials do on the palette deck. So I'm going to bring the highlights down even further, up the shadows a bit on there. And then I'm gonna add in a bit of vibrance on that sky, a bit of saturation, and then just adjust the white balance a little bit, add in a bit of the magenta with the tint there, that sky is starting to look really nice. There's a couple of dials here that you can customize as well, D1 and D2 to whichever setting you want. I've got D1 onto the D haze, which is quite a nice one to bring out some details in the cloud. So I'm just gonna add in 10 on the D haze there. And I think my gradient is done there now. Let's go to overall saturation and vibrance and just put them up to about there. 
And I'm going to bring in another grad from the bottom to about there. And again, it does the same thing again. The loop deck will edit the active gradient or brush. I'm just going to bring the shadows up a bit on there. Bit of extra exposure, bit of saturation, vibrance, and warm up that foreground a little bit too. Them. It's just really nice to use. I've been using it all this week. It works beautifully with Lightroom. It's just, it works perfectly, in fact, in the responsiveness of it. it. As you turn it, it affects the dial and it's just perfect. Apart from one pretty big caveat, which is Lightroom itself. Now, I'm using an iMac Pro here, so it should be fast, it should be up to speed, it should work well, but it just doesn't all the time. And that kind of affects your mouse as much as it does the loop deck. But sometimes if you whack up the temperature there, it takes half a second or so before Lightroom reacts to it. And that's the same with the mouse. And it's just, it just makes it a frustrating experience generally. And the, the, the palette deck suffers from that as well. So although it reacts immediately on the slider and you can see the input on the slider straight away, Lightroom sometimes takes a minute to catch up, which is very frustrating. Another nice feature it has though is you can have independent control over the hue, saturation and luminance. And then you've got these dials here to adjust the color. You can just then click them down to reset it. You've got these dark buttons here to customize as well. You've got before and after, which is nice full screen and you've got the export there as well and it's just really nice i haven't quite figured out the crop yet so you click the dial to crop and it just does rotation i don't quite know if you can crop it down to size yet but that will be something i need to figure out the undo button is nice as well for that quick undo yeah i mean i think it's going to make its way into my workflow i like it very much it's responsive i do think it will still take a little bit of time to get used to doing my full edit in this and putting the sort of keyboard aside. But one thing I'm really, really liking about it, and I think this is partly why I wanted to introduce this into my workflow in the first place, is just trying to put more of the focus onto the art. So although I'm buying a gadget, what it's allowing me to do and the problem it's solving for me is just taking the need to, or taking the technicality almost, out of photo editing, especially in Lightroom. So using the mouse and going up to these dials, the sliders on the right hand side, and having to look over in order to make them work. With this, I think once I've learned where everything is, I will be able to do my edits just at completely from touch because the dials are well placed, they're well positioned, there's good space between them. So I'll just be able to do it by feel, by touch. A bit like driving a car, it will just become second nature and I can do all my editing by just not taking my eyes off the picture at any point. And I think that's going to make me more creative and just improve my art in the editing stage of the photography process. So that's something I'm excited to explore and do a little bit more. But yeah, totally recommend the Loop Deck Plus for editing in Lightroom. The palette gear is seriously expensive. I cannot recommend buying that if you are just photo editing the Loop Deck Plus is much better, it's cheaper, it's about £200 for that. It's just a bit like an expensive keyboard, so not too bad. The palette gear is just so expensive though. It's almost offensively expensive, where the loop deck kind of feels reasonable and it gives you full control over Lightroom, which is just really, really nice. And yeah. Right, an exciting announcement before we go. I am now very honored to say that I'm going to be working with Light and Land. They are a photography tour company that was set up by Charlie Waite and Sue Bishop and has some of the best landscape photographers in the country involved in it, like Joe Cornish and a few others. And I'm just so honoured to now be running my tours and workshops through them. The first one is now up. Head over to the Light and Land website. I'll put a link down below. You can see the tour that I've got set up for the end of February, start of March next year. It's a three-day tour of the Lake District and I would love it if you were to check it out and come along with me. I'm just really, really chuffed to be involved with them and I'm looking forward to meeting a few of you on those tours as well. Okay, so stick around till the end for the Info Blast. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the loop deck and the palette gear and I'll see you on another video very, very soon. Comment, like, subscribe, do whatever you need to do and I'll see you on another video very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography, out.